so um, kind of jumping off the PSVR um, news, it recently came out that uh, Kotaku reported that Sony may be working on a PlayStation 4.5, um, which is interesting. So reading directly from Kotaku, um, Sony is currently planning a new version of the PS4 with increased graphical power and games running at 4K resolution, developer sources tell Kotaku. Um, so this is interesting. Um, so currently, um, being someone that's pretty up to date and current with um, PC gaming and graphics cards, there are only, I mean, a couple single GPUs that can reasonably run games at 4K resolutions, at each costing over six hundred dollars. And even then, they can't get anywhere near a smooth sixty frames per second. So for Sony to release um, essentially a PlayStation Slim with, you know. A different GPU, I mean, it would it would have it would have to cost a ton, right? So yeah, um, I mean, the report seems somewhat credible, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say like there's just there's just no way. This is really weird timing, though. Why would you announce this when you just announced something for people to buy for four hundred dollars? Right. It's like here's our thing we want you to buy for four hundred dollars. Oh, and if you want actually to have a better console, we're gonna have this other console. It's, I'm assuming it's gonna be more than four hundred dollars, right? It, it, it would to have be. to be seven eight hundred bucks. I mean, it would have to be. Unless they're already taking a bite on on VR, right? That's the thing is, if if it's selling for four hundred dollars, isn't the thing that like the manufacturing costs? They're not going to make a dollar on it, right? Yeah, I mean, the, to me, it doesn't seem as much like PS four point five or PS four Slim as much as it seems like PS four Premium or yeah. Elite, you know. And I think Sony needs to check them source sales before they wreck themselves again with the whole. Seven or eight hundred dollar console price point. I don't think they want to just jump into that. So, it is going to have to cost more than five hundred, I would say. Um, but I don't know. You know, like these uh, Xbox One and PS4 are four uh, K capable, but it's only for uh, like streaming Netflix and stuff like that, which Netflix isn't even doing yet. So, um, yeah, it's like I don't know. Is it even worth it for Sony? Are people going to want to buy that? Like, why wouldn't you just buy a PC at that point, I guess is what I'm saying, and, and make it 4K and, and, like, really beef it up as opposed to, like, at that point, it's just, like, a low-end PC that can do 4K. It's like you're buying so, in the middle. Yeah, exactly. So, like, the only way this could reasonably work is it would be, uh, like Jordan mentioned, a PlayStation Premium. But that would also hinge on um, the developers of new games going forward would have to, uh, you know, put a setting in their game where you can play this at 4K. Yeah. Or, you know, if you have the premium, or you can play it at 1080p, 900p, whatever. That way, you know, games aren't exclusive to either, you know, to just the premium version, which obviously, you know, wouldn't work at all. It would hurt the game, um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, the problem I have with this is why is there such this focus on, like, trying to be a PC I, I don't understand why it's like – I understand why you'd want your console to hit 4K and everything. But to me, like instead of worrying about what like what capability your console has, maybe you should worry whether or not it goes down every five days. Yeah, it's – yeah, I totally agree with that. I think that Sony and Microsoft may not even realize they're doing it, but they're pushing themselves closer and closer to not being worth it, to not being worth having – because everybody has a, almost everybody has a computer. It just may not be a gaming computer. Yeah. And then they have their console to play games on. But then, if you know, you got this PS4 Premium or whatever, why wouldn't you just buy that special beefed up PC and then it's your all in one? It's your console and your internet browser and your email thing. I just think that they're pushing themselves closer and closer to not, not being relevant. Like with. Sony just doing uh, remote play on PC, and then, of course, Microsoft starting to release all their exclusives besides Halo on PC. Um, another good point to make in this conversation is the fact that uh, Microsoft was just talking about having upgradable consoles. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's... Why wouldn't you go that direction? Like, Yeah. <laughs> instead of just saying, oh, here's a whole other different box, why don't you just have... You know, either use the USB ports or whatever you need to do and just uh, upgrade your console and make it simple. Like, I've thought about this for a while, how PS5, you could just have these, kind of like you can slide your hard drive in and out. Yeah. You can just have all these 
certain pieces like your GPU, your CPU, your hard drive. Make it consumer friendly as far as exactly. being able to upgrade it. Yeah. Make it so that it's literally just all all the main pieces that you would want to upgrade can just slide in, slide out, and you can have people playing 4K PlayStation 4, and you can have people playing 1080p PlayStation 4, and it's not going to hurt anybody because just like on PC, it's just the you know the different settings that you click through. You can scale up or scale down, and it's still the same game, but one might look better or run faster on a different machine. And that's the thing too is like if they make games that way, right? If the if the development process was that way, then I think it would be best for everybody because PC has been having a lot of problems with game ports, right? Games not working right. on PC. But if consoles were in the sense of a PC where there was these multiple settings and there were these multiple like versions, then you would hit the highest benchmark and then be able to have everything underneath it fit, right? So sure. what you're going to get with that, though, is, I mean, a lot of the stigma around PC gaming is, oh, you know, this driver update and this is going wrong and you can never just turn it on and play. Um, you know, it's a lot more complicated. And that comes from having all those different graphical settings and having all different pieces of hardware. Um, that's what makes, you know, that's what re- requires all those updates and, you know, those yeah, But people have to deal with that stuff nowadays, though, too, like with the, the, the you know, Sony Sony's network and with Xbox being down quite often, like they have to deal with stuff, too. So it's not like the what people want out of console is just like what you said. They want to be able to put in a game and play. And we're still having issues with that, whether or not they're closer to PCs or not. Like there's still issues we sure. have, you know, and it could turn out to just be a situation where it's like a. You know, the PS4, let's say it's PS5 to where you can actually, you know, upgrade your console. The PS5 could just be like a standardized PC where, for example, Arkham Knight on PC had all those issues because they're trying to, like, think of all the different configurations that you could possibly have in your machine. Yeah. And that's just not feasible. But if Microsoft or Sony are the ones saying, okay, well, you can have a choice of these four GPUs and these four CPUs and these four hard drives. And it's like build it's your standard. own. Yeah. It's all standard. It's all scalable, which games are nowadays if they're going to be on PC. And I think that that's an easy transition. And it gets us out of this whole... There's a disparity right now between console games and PC games because of the fact that PC game... Console gaming, at this point, in my opinion, is essentially holding PC gaming back. Because... No, PC absolutely. gaming could be so cool if oh, yeah. it wasn't for console games, you know? I think the way technology proliferates, too, is, like, PC is always going to be ahead of consoles. It's just the way it is, you know? Sure. But if it's an upgradable kind of thing, that means that these consoles could potentially move forward and progress at, I wouldn't say the rate of a PC, but closer, you know? So they would release yeah. these, like, standardized things more often as opposed to getting a new console every five to seven years you would get these new upgradable solutions that you could get into or not get into they're totally optional every year to two years you know well exactly Uh, like um like mobile like phone games right i mean i might have an iphone 6s and you could have an iphone 4 you can download the same games for each one mostly um, yeah but it's going to be a different experience and it's scalable and the thing too is i think even though consoles are probably going to go closer and closer to being, you know, for all intents and purposes, gaming PCs. The thing that they have above everybody is, like, when you buy a console, you're buying, like, a brand, right? So Microsoft, Sony. Sure. And there's the longevity and history there. So, like, if I had the choice to buy a, a, a gaming a gaming PC and a console that both run the same things, and I can either have one that has all of my achievements ever or one that doesn't. Yeah. And that, this is kind of an argument only for PlayStation, I guess, because... With, you know, Windows 10 and Microsoft uh, Xbox merging so much, you'll probably be able to access that stuff through Windows games anyways. But I guess it's more of a PlayStation argument of, like, would you pick the console with all of your trophies or would you pick the gaming PC when essentially they can run the same games at the same depth, you know? so The whole Microsoft Phil Spencer thing, too, he was mentioning the fact that, kind of like what you said, Dom, about uh, making it like a... a m- Uh, mobile model like phones essentially um so you you know with phones you usually upgrade every two years but you know things can change um but with this think if you know instead of every six or seven eight ten years the companies have to come out with a whole new console and instead you just kind of have a shell this box and then every two years it can be upgraded to fit the standards because For example, PS4 is more powerful than Xbox One, and yet when it came out in 2013, PS4 was 
an underpowered system compared to the PCs of the day, like standard mm-hmm. PCs. And it's even more behind now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So what we need is to be able to, uh, every couple of years, upgrade our stuff a little bit so that you don't have to, because no one's going to buy PS5 two years after PS4 comes out. And same thing with PS6, you know? Yeah. You don't want you don't want to be using the PlayStation name that often. Yep. So I think that upgrading every couple of years would be great. It would be they would have you on the hook for the long run, you know, Sony or Microsoft would to where it's like they're getting more money on the long run, but you're saving money in the short run. So I think everyone would be happy. But in it's that all sense. optional too. So like the guy True. who the guy who makes a hundred k a year can upgrade whenever like pre order everything when it comes out. Yeah. Or the kid whose parents bought him the console. He will still be able to play all the new games that come out, and he doesn't have to worry about upgrading because he really right. can't afford it. Yeah, maybe at a lower that's resolution. An everybody, but... Yeah. It's an everybody win situation. The companies are making money, and then the people who don't have time to pay for a new console every couple of years are, are winning. And I think that that would keep us from being the stagnant situation where, you know, 2016, honestly, we need new consoles. Yeah. Like, the consoles are outdated and underpowered at this point. And don't even get me started on Nintendo. They're about to bring out essentially an <laughs> Xbox that runs at 900p, and it's like, God, this that's like three years ago, dude. What are you doing, you know? So I want to see console gaming with this, you know, the world that we live in where con- technology is constantly changing. I want to see console gaming be able to constantly change and not have to wait until the next generation to be able to take that big step. PlayStation takes this premium route that we're, you know, self-titling it, and Xbox goes the upgradable route. PlayStation is essentially figuring out ways to to lose their lead because yeah. if if Xbox hits this first, it's going to be a definite solution to what people people have in their minds of needing to buy a new console every five years. So right, yeah. So I will say this: one of the speculated names for this PlayStation Premium is PS4K, which <laughs> sounds so good. Yeah, it does. Just as a name, PS4K VR something. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah <laughs> see that's the thing like you said at the beginning of this topic jared why would you announce this when you're announcing this whole vr system that you're trying to get people to buy into like it just seems like they're getting greedy this at this road. point honestly i mean yeah, i exactly. think this is i think this is more of a leak um let me go back and read um but then again means... you don't know what's quote-unquote leaked you know this could be right. leaked but you never know so by Sony. Sony's got to be careful with that lead, man. They've still got a lot of people that remember the PS3 generation and the whole, you're going to have to get a second job for this console. Like, don't even go there, man. Don't even start thinking that you can just charge us whatever If anything, you want. Sony should understand that Phil Spencer's public enemy number one. Cause... Sure. <laughs> well, a lot of people like him so much, dude. Yep. A lot of people like me still remember the Red Ring of Death and having to go through three Xbox 360s in that. Cycle. Yeah, but you can still buy two 360s and still be at the same price point of a <laughs> PS3. Very good point. <laughs> That's a good one. I think that uh, it's I'm I'm officially titling it the PS2 Hubris, and they don't need to get the PS2 Hubris back. They need to leave that where it where it was back in the PS3 generation. Yeah, I fully agree. Alrighty, thank you for that topic, Dom. It was really good. Uh, we're going to shift over to Jordan's topic now. What do you got for us, Jordan? What's up, everybody? Thanks for checking out the Controlled Interest Gamecast. If you want to stay up to date, remember to subscribe on YouTube and iTunes, and give us a follow on SoundCloud and on Twitter at C-T-R-L-I-N-T. Hashtag smash the dunst! <laughs>